Welcome to the fourth and final section of this course. In this section, we will talk about unsupervised learning with deep neural networks. So uh, let's see what we are going to learn in this section. In the first video of the section, we will talk about autoencoders and how to use them to extract features from a data set. We will use a Higgs boson data set. In the second video, we talk about PCA or principal component analysis a well-known technique for dimensionality reduction. We will see how to implement this technique using TensorFlow. In the third video, we talk about these special types of neural networks called uh, restricted Boltzmann machines, and we use them to represent images using less information. In the fourth and final video of this section, we will talk about um, clustering, a well-known unsupervised learning technique, and in particular, we will see how to use TensorFlow to perform k-means clustering. So uh, this is the plan for this section. Let's begin. This is the first video of this section, and here we talk about autoencoders and how to build them using TensorFlow. So this is the plan for this video. First, we will give uh, a brief introduction to autoencoders, a high-level introduction to autoencoders. Then we will use autoencoders with the Higgs boson dataset. And finally, we will review the recipe for building autoencoders. Okay, what is an autoencoder? An autoencoder is a neural network built to reproduce its own inputs. Remember, we are dealing here with unsupervised learning, so we don't have targets. And in this case, what we want to do with these autoencoders is uh, to build a neural network capable of reproducing as best as it can uh, its own inputs. So uh, you can see here uh, a simplified example of an autoencoder. We have some inputs, then we pass these inputs through a set of hidden layers, and the first step is called encode. And then um, one of the restrictions that we have in autoencoders is that we use lower dimensionality here in the hidden layers, and then with using this lower dimensionality, we try to represent the same input here. So we try to make this output as close as the input. So that is how autoencoders work. And the goal of this process is to produce some what are called coatings that contain an efficient way of containing the information present in the inputs. So autoencoders can learn efficient representations of the data referred as codings. The codings is what we want from the autoencoder, as we will see uh, in the example. Um, they are used mainly for dimensionality reduction and related applications, and they can be also used to extract new features from data. And that's how we are going to use the autoencoder in our example. Another use of autoencoders is to generate new data that is similar to the original training data. Sometimes we need to expand uh, the data that we have available for training, and autoencoders can be um, a nice tool for doing that. One interpretation of the codings is as features detectors. So the codings can be thought of as uh, different features that may help us solving uh, the problem that we have. And autoencoders are very, very similar to multi-level perceptrons, which are the types of neural networks that we have been using in this course. Okay, so uh, here we have the same picture that I showed you before, but um, this is a representation of the implementation of the autoencoder that we will do in the example. So here we have some inputs, and then uh, we pass these inputs uh, to a hidden layer, and this hidden layer has its own weights, and then we pass this to another hidden layer and notice that this hidden layer has lower dimension than the original input. So, so these are the codings. The second hidden layer in this case are the codings. This hidden layer also has its own uh, weights. Now we pass the resulting uh, values from this uh, layer to a third hidden layer and then we pass this to the output and this is the output layer and the output of course has the same dimensionality as the input because we want to make the output as close as possible to the input. Now an, an additional restriction that we will impose in our network in this autoencoder is that the weight for the third hidden layer must be 
the same, the weights must be the same as the weights that we had in the second hidden layer. So as you can see here, we have the same weight, we, we have the same weight matrix, however, it, it is transposed because for example, here we are going from three dimensions to two dimensions. And since here we are going from two dimensions to three dimensions, again, uh, we have to transpose this. The same happens here with the weights for the last layer. Uh, we will use the same weights as we have here in the first hidden layer. So um, the same thing, we have to transpose them. And this is an additional restriction that we impose in our network so the network can learn the most efficient representation from the inputs. Okay, now that we have the intuition about what autoencoders do, let's go and see the example. Okay, this is the Jupyter Notebook we will use for this example. And the task that we are going to do is to take some of the features that we have in our original Higgs boson dataset and uh, try to get new features from those features. So as always, uh, the first step is to load and prepare the data. Since we are doing here some unsupervised learning, um, we only need the matrix containing the features. So we don't need the, the target in, in this case. Um, now, remember when I introduced this data set, I told you that we have two types of, of features here. We have 21 that are considered low level features and we have another seven that are considered a high level feature. So what we are going to do here is to use these uh, low level features and we will try to get some transformation of these features, some efficient representation of these uh, 21 features in four new features. So uh, these four features may be helpful for doing other tasks like detecting if there is a a signal for the Higgs boson. So this is the task that we are going to do in this example. So and this is the first step. Second step is to build the input pipeline. And we have seen this code before. Uh, in this case, uh, we will use again the dataset API and we will use only the matrix containing the low level feature. So uh, this is the second step. The third step is to build a function containing the neural network and we will see uh, how to implement the network that I showed you back in the presentation. So uh, first, this is the number of inputs that we have. So we have 21 features that we would like to use to get these new features. So 21 features, we want to uh, capture as much information as we can from these 21 features. The first hidden layer in our network, we have 12 neurons and the second hidden layer will have four. So this is the number of codings that we want to extract. So we want four new features. In this case, this is the layer that corresponds to the middle of the network. So we will extract the values from this layer. And then in the, uh, the third hidden layer, we'll have uh, again, 12 neurons and the outputs, uh, the number of outputs that we want is the number of inputs because we would like to reproduce uh, the inputs as well as we can. Okay, so this is the function containing the autoencoder. What these three lines do is just to initialize the weights for the first two layers in our network. So these are the weights for the first hidden layer and these are the weights for the second hidden layer. As I told you in the presentation, the uh, weights for the third and for the fourth hidden layer are the same weights that we used here. That's why uh, we have the same here. Uh, we are just transposing the, the corresponding values, okay? Now we have the biases for every layer in our network and we will just initialize the biases with zeros. And here we have the actual neural network. So uh, the first hidden layer, just this is basically the operation that gives us a hidden layer. So applying the ReLU to uh, the matrix multiplication of the inputs times the weights plus the bias. Okay, and this is the middle of the network. This is the second hidden layer, but we called it here the conins. This is what we want to extract uh, from this network. And uh, finally, in the outputs, this is the output layer. Okay, so what we are going to return from this function are the conins and the outputs. Okay. This is the third step and we just implemented um, a network 
based on the description that I gave before doing the presentation. Now, uh, step number four is to create a placeholder to pass the values for training. And in this case, we only need a placeholder for X because this is unsupervised learning. And um, step number five is to define the loss. So we want two things from this function, uh, from the autoencoders, we will get uh, the X, the output, the representation of the original input. And what we want is to reduce the distance between uh, the square distance between the output and the original input of the network this what you have here we take the mean we are essentially calculating the mean squared error here this is also known as the reconstruction loss okay so this is the loss that we will minimize and we will minimize it using um, an optimizer so we know uh, this operation very well now step seven is to well this is as always this is an optional step but this will make your code more readable uh, we write a function for running the training operation so we've seen this code before or a version of this code before and finally a, in step eight is to run the computational graph okay so now uh, once the network has been trained we have our optimal values for our weights and we can get our resulting coins here so uh, we got the resulting coins here by running these two nodes from the computational graph so we have here the resulting coins and this is how these new features look like so i just named them resulting feature and so we have these four new features contain uh, an efficient representation of the 21 features uh, that we used as input for this network so um, now uh, this could be used uh, as I said before for example to try to detect in a better way the signal that can lead to the Higgs boson uh, but we don't know if this will actually help so that is uh, another subject but uh, at least we have uh, here four new features that represent efficiently the information contained in the original 21 low level features okay great so this is a little review of the recipe we saw in the notebook how to build an autoencoder using tensorflow um, the first as always the first step is to load and prepare the data the second step will be to build the input pipeline uh, the third step is to build a function containing the neural network and here you decide how many features you want from your autoencoder uh, step number four is to create a placeholder to pass the values for training and here we pass just the x values the x matrix uh, that contains the original features uh, step number five is to define the loss step number six is to define the optimizer and training operation uh, in step seven is optional but we uh, write a function to uh, for running the training operation step number eight is to run the computational graph and then you visualize or analyze the results now as you can see this uh, recipe looks very very familiar it looks almost exactly as creating a deep neural network because in the end uh, an autoencoder is just a special kind of neural network okay so you only have additional restrictions but is in essence a neural network okay in this video we learn how to build an autoencoder to get features that are an efficient lower dimension representation of the original data.